Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and this is another session of live coding the Vegan Buddies app. I'm still a bit sick, and so I presume this is going to be a bit of a fiasco, but, and I still haven't started decoding it either, uh, but I'll get to it. So what I left, uh, just to recap the last session, what I was saying was that, um, I have the Vegan Buddies app like plan set out for me by Petr Benesh who designed the wireframes and the kind of game plan was designed by a woman named Teresa van der Aftsova. So I kind of have set out for me what I need to do. And you can see the wireframe here. Um, basically, it shows qualified vegans near you uh, in a list. And then you can click on their profiles and um, start a chat with them. And that's about it. That's all that we really need. So we need a way of finding people who are qualified vegans that are near you and starting a chat. And I don't want to design the chat software from the start. And so what I've decided is instead I'm going to take fluffy chat, uh, which is a Android flutter uh, based chat uh, app that's open source for the matrix protocol. And I'm going to fork uh, Fluffy Chat, or I'm going to find a way to turn Fluffy Chat into a library and just use their chat widget uh, for the Vegan Buddies app. And what I was doing when I ended the last stream is I was trying to figure out how to build and run Fluffy Chat so I can start working on kind of uh, modifying and taking the code from Fluffy Chat and using it. So, the problem that I ran into last time was that I was out of disk space uh, on my root directory, and so I'm running in a virtual machine, and so I just wanted to resize that image, and I've gone ahead and done that, and if I look in the image, I see that I have 50 gigabyte size, but the file system is still small. And I need to fig figure out how to resize ext4 file systems. And so that's what I'm searching for right now. Uh, it's amazing how little programming one does as a programmer sometimes. Uh, and one spends their life dealing with these silly little things. But that's just life. Um, uh, resize file system vert manager I think that I was following some guide hello and I got to the point where I had grown the disk, but I still hadn't resized the file system, so I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. So I did the QMU, Kemu, uh, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, perhaps Kemu image resize. And I added 20 gigabytes to the size of the file, the image. And then I went down here and I found that they told you to do this. And I was going through this when the alarm clock told me that I need to go ahead and start this 
screen. So I installed Cloud Guest Utils, which are just called Cloud Utils on NixOS. And I did the grow part command and uh-huh, there's more commands that I need to do. Mm -hmm. So many commands. Maybe I need to do this. I'll try this. Resize to FS. Yay, it worked. I now have 30 gigabytes free. So I can now start <laughs> doing what I was doing last time, which was trying to install Fluffy Chat, uh, like doing the dev image. And in order to do that, I uh, was modifying my Nix config. To contain Android Studio packages and I remember that I was shocked at how big it was it was many many gigabytes so this will probably take most of the time for the stream just waiting for this to finish so I'm going to have to think of what I'm going to do in the meantime so that I use my time effectively, which is not something I'm good at usually. <clears throat> so let me go and switch over to Emacs and I will surprisingly slow right now maybe because I'm in a virtual machine and there's something else going on maybe I should look at top on the host to see what's going on uh, Alacrity something is taking up OBS is taking up all of my CPU. That's interesting. OBS is taking 163 CPU. Why is it taking up so much CPU? On uh, Debian, which I was r running just a few days ago, it was taking 10% CPU. Now OBS takes 300% CPU. That's bizarre. Um, okay. Not sure how to deal with that. I'm going to have to worry about that later and just use this very slow system. <laughs> so in the roadmap, I had developed this architecture in which I had a lobster's server and I had a user index and the mobile app based off of um, based on fluffy chat and then a matrix server so I shouldn't have to program anything new for the matrix server the mobile app is going to be programmed based off of fluffy chat and so I'm going to 
hopefully not have to program that much, but there's still a lot that's going to be in the mobile app. I'm going to have, if I switch over to the Vegan Buddies website where I have the wireframes, um, so these, this list of messages is going to be new. Um, there's going to be some settings that are new. Um, and these profiles of the vegan buddies, the qualified vegans, is going to be new. But it's just showing information. It's not even, uh, like, read-write. It's just statically displaying information. And all of the interactive component, uh, components are going to be in the chat widget that's already been created by Fluffy Chat. So hopefully it's not going to be too much programming on the mobile side because I don't know how to program mobile apps, though I probably should learn. Um, and then there's the user index, which is a database of the qualified vegans. And this database is going to um, take information from lobsters and so it's going to have to synchronize itself with lobsters and one question is whether um, who's going to be able to write to the database mm. whether I need to do authentication I want it to be a very simple web service just this list of the qualified vegans and the ability to query by latitude and longitude, like proximity to a geographic location. Wow, the, the Android Studio actually is installed already, so maybe I will start playing with modifying fluffy chat but in just a moment because right now I'm going to go get myself a paracetamol because I have a headache <clears throat> Okay, so I'm back, and um, so I had just installed the Android Studio, which I have never used before in my life, and I'm going to try to use that to uh, run the um, Fluffy Chat client for Android. So I should debug with flutter run. No supported devices. Android AVD images available. Do I just go in and Google loop this?
Do I need to install even more? Wow, what's up with the weird graphics? So it seems like right now we're going to be downloading the Android emulator. I have to accept some Eula. And I need to scroll down in order to accept it, I guess. Why didn't why can't I click the finish button? Uh-huh. I did not read these texts. I am accepting them only as a formality and do not actually agree with the legal documents. given that I haven't read them and therefore I cannot accept them. Okay, so perhaps I'll switch back to um, thinking about the user index. So I have the lobster, lobster server where mentors are invited. I can show again to remind myself how it works. So you have this web service this open source service lobsters.rs and it has the ability to post articles but that's not what's of interest to me what's of interest to me is actually this ability to have a tree of users um, I'm not sure how to see the tree of users Ian, uh, invitation tree so we have every user has a profile and there's a tr invita inv invitation tree that allows us to allow invites of users um, so that only users that are invited by another person with the right to invite uh, can exist in the system. You can't register. There's no register link. There's only the ability to invite users. And also, if something weird happens, uh, that some user is inviting a bunch of spammers or like bad people, then their entire tree can be deleted and all of their invites can be revoked. 
which is very useful. It has a lot of powerful, uh, like, uh, tools for revoking invites and banning people that most other services don't have. And so I want to use this because I don't want to program all of that uh, like account management software myself. And why wouldn't I just use this pre-existing system? And so what we're going to do is we're going to have users appear here and when they appear here, we're going to go ahead and trigger some kind of event that goes and updates the user index where there's going to be more information about the user. And so the user index is just going to pull information from uh, Lobster's server and and allow querying of users by latitude and longitude. One thing that is important in the user index though is that there's user ratings and user ratings are not going to be set in the user's lobster profile because the user shouldn't be able to set their own ratings. And I have to think about how to do authentication in the user in index to update those user ratings. Mm. I guess when uh, the mobile app asks for a list of the users, then it'll send a request to the user index and the user index will come up with a list of like perhaps five, 10 users that are closest to the latitude and longitude given. And then it'll go and it'll look up each of those five to 10 users in on the lobsters server to make sure they haven't been banned and then it'll return that list and it'll if the user has been banned it'll update its own cache of information to uh, make it so that it doesn't have to go and keep on looking up banned users over and over again so i guess the user index if it would be stored in a database would only be one table it would just be a table with some columns um, that would be various things about the user and hmm now i'm thinking whether um, it wouldn't be a good idea to communicate with the user index through matrix so that that would be how authentication would work. Um, not sure about that one. But maybe the user index could be a matrix bot. Like it would end up being a structure like this. bit misaligned here maybe that makes sense that like the user index is kind of like the channel mod an IRC 
that you ask it for users that are near a location. I think that makes a lot of sense. That it's a it's basically a matrix bot. So freaking slow. I'm definitely gonna have to figure out why OBS is taking up so much uh, CPU. I think I can even smell it. it. Smells a little bit like hot plastic in here. <laughs> Very eco-friendly, I guess. Fans running at max. Okay, so um, let's look if, okay, it's finished. There's a new directory called Android. It's weird. Gradista. No, not Gradesta. Vegan Buddies. Fluffy Chat. No errors yet. I don't know what's going on. Like, is this a button, this run thing, or is it a window? I don't even know. I really don't understand what's going on right now. I said to run it, and I don't see any windows. Maybe it's confused because I'm using a tiling window manager? Maybe it's still loading because my computer is ridiculously slow? I don't know. Maybe I should try again. Or maybe I should try at the command line now. Maybe there will be some kind of... No, I'm learning, but it's different. There's a different... Uh, Error at least. It's good. So should I try seeing if there's a w the ability to create emulators in Android Studio or?
Device manager, maybe? That open? Is this opening? Tools? Device manager? Is there going to be something happening? No? Okay. So I'll switch back to the command line and see if that's not going to be easier. So uh, we're going to go and create an emulator. Maybe I'll look at the documentation. Android Studio Welcome Screen. Is this Android Studio? Android Studio Chipmunk, okay. Device Manager doesn't even load when I open it. So maybe I need to close this project, try loading it again. Hopefully it doesn't just load up the thing that I had opened up so that I can find the the button that they showed. Because I remember this screen, new project open, blah blah blah. This is bizarrely slow, this is like not normal. So we already tried clicking on view tool windows device manager. Oh wait, didn't actually do that. We went to tools device manager. This is just never going to load. Hmm. One of these Java apps that has the task name Java, that's really useless. Um, I remember that they fixed that problem at some point. I'm not sure why it's still a problem.
and it was working just a moment ago. It did load. Unable to read tip of the day, kotlin.html. Make sure your Android Studio and Kotlin plugin is installed properly. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's something wrong with the way that I've installed it using Nix. Now I have the green sc the gray screen again that never goes away. So I guess I'll just go back to, hey, there's actually something going on here since I loaded it from the command line. Is it downloading stuff maybe? And it's slow downloading stuff because I have a slow internet connection, but why would it be downloading stuff without showing some kind of progress dialog? Maybe it's just not very good. Anyway, let's try to do something useful at least. Mm. So I guess that there could be two tables in the user index, one for user ratings and the other for um, for users, or perhaps even three tables, um, one for user ratings, one for users, and the third for test results that would be qualification tests for uh, mentors that the mentors would have to pass a test to show that they know what vitamin B12 is and what vitamin D is and they can't be a mentor until they know what vitamin B12 is and vitamin D are. So I'm going to write this server, this user index server in Rust, I think, because Rust is a good server-side language. It's very fast and it doesn't have memory safety issues. And I'm going to have to find out how to do that because I've never written a server in Rust. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to have it backed by a database. So I'm going to have to set up databases, though I'm probably going to hopefully find a way to do it with SQLite at first, so that I don't have to manage Postgres in my dev environment. And yeah, so do I have, car I have cargo. Um, and so I guess there's two things that I need uh, to write the user index software. I need to uh, find a library that allows me to uh, interact with the database using Rust. And it, I want the library to be somewhat database agnostic. I want it to work with both SQLite and Postgres. Postgres. And I also need to be able to create a matrix chatbot in Rust. So I'm going to start out by searching um, create.io um,
A matrix laboratory. I'm not sure what that is. Simple generic matrix library. Sounds maybe promising. So I'm going to check this one out. Uh, this isn't matrix like the protocol. This is matrix as in linear algebra. Hopefully this is, uh, this is also linear algebra. Um, so I guess we're half to use the search engine matrix rust SDK so I have two uh, options. I have matrix rest SDK and I have Ruma. Usually the one that has the weird name is better because uh, the one that was written by the <laughs> person who chose the generic name did it first and then somebody else came along and wrote a better version but that's not always the case last commit yesterday by somebody named Gunicorn named after the Python web server bizarre a little bit github Uruma. Updated two hours ago. One was updated yesterday, the other was updated two hours ago. Bizarre. It's very, very intense development, which is almost like frightening, you know, because he. Silly mouse. Uh. So we have both stable and unstable documentation for Ruma. So which should we use? Matrix SDK high level client library with battery in included. You're most likely interested in this. This library is in an alpha state. Things that are implemented generally work, but the API will change in breaking ways. That doesn't sound very appealing. Status. As of 2022, we support all events and REST endpoints of the version 1 version of matrix specification with version 1.1 and 1.2 coverage in progress. Um, At least they don't say that it's going to break definitely. Requires Rust 1.55. I'm on NixOS, so having a recent Rust shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so
documentation Just going to check to see if there's any progress on this. Nothing is going on with this. At some point I should kill it, but not yet. So, App Service API, Application Service API. I'm not sure what an application service is. Client API, that sounds very promising. Server, server, I don't need federation, I guess, because I'm not creating a matrix server, hopefully, I guess. Or am I? I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Like, I want to create a matrix bot. I don't know what the correct way to do that is. Do they have a how-to? Just saw something that really interests me. If you want to build a matrix client or bot, have a look at Matrix Rust SDK. It builds on Ruma and includes handling of state storage and end encryption and many other things. And that was the thing that says it's going to that it's an alpha state and it's going to break in the future. The thing that I said that I didn't like. Hmm. And this is based off of the Ruma thing that's like more stable. Cargo. Uh huh. So there's multiple crates. So it does indeed build off of Aruma. So this is like some kind of mm, porcelain over Aruma. And does it have any kind of documentation on? How to use it? Any documentation at all? It has 43 contributors, so at least somebody probably figured out how to use it, though it has this tag, Hacktoberfest, so maybe those contributors uh, were just contributing like readme changes to get like fashion points or something, I don't know. Seems mostly this unicorn person. Let me see what the graph looks like. Insights, Pulse, Contributors, okay so that's actually really healthy contribution pattern.
Okay, so I don't know if if like when I have the preview paused, if it doesn't show anybody else. It's a little bit weird. Isn't it? Like why would I need to be downloading hide player maybe? Okay, so maybe I wasn't actually live streaming right now. But at least I have it recorded. So, I've seen that there are a number of contributors that contribute to this Matrix Rust SDK, but I haven't found the documentation for it yet. I haven't figured out how to actually create a um, bot using it. Okay, so I have this message hand uh, so so this is an example matrix bot and it has a message handler that is implementing the counter handler trait so the counter handler trait is this kind of empty trait on top of this counter struct that just has a number in it. So it's going to just count up, I presume, and So the counter handler has a handle message method and I I don't know like aha uh -huh. so so counter handler is a struct the trait that's being implemented is message handler which is a, a trait from the matrix bot API and that trait has a method handle message that takes a active bot and a message and uh, the self so the actual counter in this case and it extract um, so the message has a body I'm not sure where extract command is coming from uh-huh it's from the matrix bot API uh, so we get a command and if the command is increment we increment our counter if the command is decrement we decrement our counter and if the command is show then we um, show the counter counter equals counter and th we do that by sending a message to um to the room where is the room coming from message.room aha uh -huh, i see so 
the basically this is a reply and I'm not sure what message types are what a room notice is but this seems quite simple in that we just have to basically create this actor and we can handle messages from any number of users then this appears to be blocking code um, so I'm not sure if not sure if the blocking code means that there's going to be a limitation on the number of messages we can handle if that's going to be a problem for database access like we're going to need to do some kind of asynchronous magic here but that's kind of a performance question that can be hopefully dealt with retrospectively we have this main function and it loads a bot config home server so it just logs into a home server I guess yeah bot dot run user password home server so we don't actually have to run our own matrix server to create this bot we can just like create a user and give it a password and hopefully this message has a sender as well so we can use that for authentication actually this seems like it's going to be quite simple um, and so this struct is going to contain a, a database handler uh, that hopefully we can put mutables in here well I guess we can put mutables in here since this is mutable we're mutating it here so that shouldn't be a problem and uh, yeah we can just build off of this so that's nice and now we need to figure out how to interface with a database in Rust or we can go check if to see if Android Studio is woken up yet no it has not so not sure what to do about the Android Studio thing not working I guess I'm going to program the matrix bot first and then deal with writing the Android app because the matrix bot is what I know how to write and maybe once the community grows a little bit then somebody can give me some advice on how to create the uh, app or how to modify fluffy chat so I have a half hour left in the stream and I'm very tired because I'm still quite sick with the cold or flu or whatever it is I'm wondering if I should even call it quit early but half an hour is something I should be able to survive Whew. matrix bot API and I wanted to well I should save this here somewhere first so let's see if it's on crates Yeah, it's it's been uploaded to it was last updated two years ago. I don't know if that's a problem or not. Because I like the API. 
but 2020 is two years ago. Wow. Hopefully that's not a problem because it looks like it's really simple to use. Maybe it's not been updated because it's just perfect and nobody needs to update it. Um, so I guess right now I should start my project, my user listing project. So user index. I wonder if I can make the bot API so incredibly um, user friendly that one could actually just use the bot in a normal matrix client. Like not a, not a normal person, but a crazy person like me could use the bot in a normal matrix client. And so that we could actually have the system functioning uh, before before the Android app is created, like you could actually use the system. You could have a command. You could have a command that you could call uh, to the bot asking for users near a latitude and longitude and get a list back and then you could query about those users and you could get information about them. I wonder if this can be written in such a way that it's not vegan buddy specific, that this would be like a generic matrix bot that other people could use as a library in their own projects that required geographic like locations. What would that, what would be the things that are specific to vegan buddies that wouldn't allow that? So we have the user index that has latitude and longitude. And the thing that's weird about this is the lobster server and the fact that it's invite only. But perhaps it could be something that would be kind of like a plugin into the, into the server. Like the server would basically, mm, be mm, I think user ratings and perhaps test results are something that can be kind of core to it if somebody wanted to create other services that had a, like geographic locations of users and searching for users by geographic location uh, then you wouldn't want the lobsters thing, and I'm not sure whether you would want the test results, but maybe it can be entirely pluggable, that the system can... Um, I think that's a good idea. Matrix... So, so perhaps the, the matrix geographic user index, perhaps it shouldn't be using a SQL style database. Perhaps it should be using a NoSQL style database uh, that allows adding and removing columns really easily so that 
the 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 user can basically set any kind of property about themselves and then other users can rate users uh, so that the user could have like a collection of ratings you could look up the the user's ratings perhaps the re user's reviews and so you end up with this like system that you look up a user, you look up users nearby, and then you can look up more information about that user, and you can find out whether they have good reviews or bad reviews. That seems very generic, and I like generic. And then we add the querying of lobsters as maybe not even a specific function within the thing, but we could just have a um, field in the user index that um, allowed uh, users to write that they have this lobsters profile and then the vegan buddies app could go look up if that person's legit or not and then the question is, how do we deal with spam in the user index? How do you deal with... Uh, that would be kind of like a DDoS attack, that you would just fill up the user index with a bunch of like users that don't have lobster profiles that are valid. I guess you do need some kind of caching and validation that you... you would like have some kind of plugin that would... if the... You, that you would be able to query by users with a lobster's profile and... Uh, geographic location and then you when the person set the lobsters profile there would be a plugin that would allow it to verify that the person was on lobsters and wasn't banned okay dokey so i have 20 minutes left and i'm getting more and more tired but i think i'm getting somewhere so i'm going to name it matrix geographic user index is my new project I always like to just copy for myself so I'm going to go ahead and copy from whatever Grudista stuff I have and then I'm just going to change that source code to reflect mm, this new project CP nope that was wrong CP manager So, go ahead and start updating this cargo.lock. I should just delete it and it'll get regenerated. And here. I can start adding dependencies and I want the matrix bot API. That's all underscores and 0 0.5.2 is the latest one. And beyond that, I don't even know what I am going to need. I'm going to need so. I'm going to need that database thing, but I don't know what type of database thing I'm going to need yet. C++ 
use looks useful. And Just looking what I need to delete so that I have a clean tree. I guess I guess I'm gonna keep one file that I can rename to um, something. that I'm going to work on and I'll use that one file as kind of like just a template. So I'm not going to name it organized socket store because it's no longer going to be organized socket store, but it's going to be the first bit of functionality that I implement in the geographic user index. And um, the first bit of functionality is going to be uh, the command that um, adds or updates a user. So I have in my work table a new unit uh, that's going to um, take a command from this bot SDK, this bot API and it's going to also take a database and it's going to put the user into that database or update an existing user and then I'm going to check whether the database has been updated. Maybe I need both the ability to update and check f and look up a user and so I can have the full unit that it can be tested the entire thing. Um, what are the docs here? I didn't see any docs when I was looking at it. So this looks like the idea it has good documentation. So this is the stateless one that I didn't even look at. I guess if I use the stateless one, then I'm not going to have any problems with uh, blocking, maybe. I don't know how this is written, if it's written blocking or non-blocking. But if the stateless one is um, non-blocking, then I could create a new database connection with every handling of the requests and use a connection pool, I guess and then I won't have any blocking at all. But creating lots and lots of short-lived database connections is bad, so I don't know.
I don't know what's best. Like creating a new database connection for each command is going to be very slow, so it might have worse performance than if I than I if I have it so that it doesn't support um, multi-threading or whatever it's called uh, or non-blocking, you know. And if the user database can fit in memory, and it should be able to fit in memory, like if there are, um, I don't have Python 3 installed. How do you calculate things without Python installed? Okay, I'm going to have to install Python just so I have a calculator. Well, I guess I don't even need a calculator for this. If I have like 1 billion users, right? And I have a kilobyte of information about each user in the database, then how many gigabytes of that data is that? That would be a terabyte of data, I think. And that would be totally fine. Like, that wouldn't actually be more data <laughs> than would fit in memory on a very, very large server, and a billion users is a lot. If I have 100 million users, that would be a 100 gigabytes of data if there's a kilobyte. And so the question is, if there's only going to be a kilobyte of data per user, like if I can use an in-memory DB and not have to worry about blocking. This is probably premature optimization. I don't know, is it premature optimization? Yeah, it's probably premature optimization. Um, but it is a question, like whether I should use some kind of like in-memory DB or if I should use some kind of DB that's out of process like Postgres is. I guess you want it to be backed up and have all of the like journaling stuff that Postgres has so I guess you should probably use Postgres or something or MongoDB I've never used MongoDB but mmm My understanding is that it's a NoSQL database that allows you to very easily add and remove columns, like that it's not so difficult mm, to work with the migrations as with Postgres. But that's just my like very, very vague understanding of it. 
because I know that if I'm using Postgres, then it very quickly becomes super non-optimal that you end up with a lot of old columns when you're like developing it. Uh, it's basically you have to know your schema in advance. And for this kind of development, it's not really the right choice. It's not great. This is super, super salesy and it doesn't have any actual like useful information about how to use the product or like install it or anything. I think I'm going to end the stream now and I'm going to figure out how to do this, figure out which database to use for the geographic um, geographic user index later. And so I'm going to go ahead and commit all of these changes that I've made. and upload them to the interwebs. Wait, what is target is not in my git ignore, so I need to Why is it saying that there's a target directory when there is no target directory? Matrix geographic user index target. Why is it, it's frozen again? Getting git status is freezing my computer, which actually isn't that unusual. Uh-huh, why is I I didn't want to put cargo lock in there. I thought I deleted the cargo lock.
Okay, so I have a, I think skeleton spelled wrong, but I have a commit and now I can go and upload it to GitHub and I can sign off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did some manual edits to the file. Uh, there's some divergent stuff. There's some kind of... What's wrong? Uh-huh. This is a new behavior of Git, that it doesn't just merge things. Because rebasing is better. And that allows you to do it without any merge commits, which is nice. Okay, so hopefully now when I go to veganbuddies.org and I join us on GitHub, there will be a new commit if it's visible this is so freaking slow I really don't know what's going on with this just turn off midnight lizard because midnight lizard makes everything much slower ah there we go here's my spelling error and we're good to go I can sign off now so I'll see you next week at, on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Eastern European time and I'll be doing another stream. Hopefully I will actually get to coding this time, next time. Goodbye.